Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 6 Italian battleship Andrea Doria. This is the uh, Julius Caesar variant that's been moved up to Tier 6, but with sap. Uh, is it as good? Well, of course not, because GC was broken. But we're going to talk about how to play this ship, how to be more effective, and overall enjoy this game. Now, my build is on the screen. We have main armament protection, keep those guns from being incapacitated, lower chance of flood and fire, better gun accuracy, and uh, faster rudder shift. And then I only have a 14 point right now. I know, only 14. Preventative maintenance, great for protecting it from incapacitation. Faster turret traverse, it is mid tier, they have slow. Uh, drill and rush, uh, concealment, and then the emergency repair. I, I really have enjoyed going for tank builds. Uh, they seem to play very well for me. Uh, the only thing you have to overcome is, unfortunately, bad teams, but everyone has to overcome that. Uh, so we're going to move over towards the southern side. We've got some friendly DDs spotting for us. And you can see we have heal, but we don't have smoke. Smoke becomes available at tier 8. Now, the gun caliber at this tier is 320, just as the tier 5 and uh, the GC. It does have sap, though and it does have armor piercing. Obviously, you wanna fire a lot of sap. Only fire armor piercing when it's sort of a broadside battleship that has too much armor, or you're looking for a great big cruiser citadel. But, because of the small gun caliber, I would definitely encourage you to err on the side of sap more often than not, outside of those you know, unique cases where you actually have to fire AP because there's no armor that's presented. Uh, obviously, it works well against an angled cruiser, and that's the design. It's supposed to introduce pretty good alpha, and you have good maneuverability, good torturers to d dip in and dip out. So we're trying to work on the Nuremberg. And the Nuremberg's going down pretty well. Uh, I open up my stance so that all four gun turrets can fire on the target. Seems like everyone's trying to fire on this guy. And unfortunately, we miss. Now, that is one of the downsides. Ah, uh, friendlies did take him out. It's Italian. The Italian battleships are basically shotguns. But you don't have smoke to close the distance. You just have to fire with inaccuracy. Uh, the reason why I go accuracy is because it ends up working out pretty good. Now, one thing that you might argue or you might be interested in doing is picking up Deadeye. Deadeye probably will have a significant impact on your shot accuracy, especially at mid-tier. Most of the time, it takes people forever to get into distance. I choose to tank, but if you guys just can't overlook the horrible shell dispersion, and it is bad, then yes, Deadeye probably is the way to go. Of all the skills that you might choose to omit, Fire prevention versus emergency repair. Uh, probably lean towards emergency repair to omit over fire prevention because fire prevention is useful at, at uh, minute one. Whereas emergency repair, eh, it is useful, but it's not as useful at minute one as it would be at the end of the game because it is sort of adding an extra charge. It's superintendent. It's a four point skill. So that's where I'm at on my Italians. Um, obviously, in this situation, this cruiser is too close to benefit from Deadeye, so that would work against me. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not really a Deadeye fan, because I would rather just be tanky so that I could be aggressive or disengage. I wouldn't be altering my play style too much. Otherwise, I feel like I'm missing out on a, a skill that obviously costs four points. It's kind of like taking IFHE and using AP. You don't really get any form of benefit from them. But we're doing pretty good. There's some broadside battleships. We're firing AP, just as you should, uh, because SAP will, especially the 320 SAP, it's not going to have enough penetration to overcome sort of the World War I heavy armor on the outside. But armor piercing absolutely will. And that's the shell you need to fire in those situations. This is very different from high tier. High tier is more or less just fire sap, just shoot at the part of the armor that's low. Uh, at this tier, you could do that, but there's so much thick armor on battleships, it's almost impossible. 
and there's almost no superstructure. So there's not this section of the ship with super low armor that you can rely on. Enemy cruiser showing a broadside. Unfortunately, we don't get the Citadel. We're doing pretty good damage though. We could conceivably switch to sap. Uh, if we do get a Citadel, then it makes it worth it. But if we don't, sap's probably gonna do more damage in this situation. I am, of course, dipping in and dipping out when my gun is fully reloaded. And uh, we're gonna try and fire on this guy. It's great that the enemy hasn't really fired on us. It really makes this very easy, of course. Um, but that's partially because the enemy is engaged so much and they're trying to be cheeky. They're trying to meet up with their team, but both sides are really winning this. Uh, but AD, the tier six, it's okay. It's more or less, it's there to get you forward. The real prize of the Italian battleships is the high tier bracket to me. Uh, the mid-tier is more of, um, you know, you need to have good understanding of the game mechanics to get the most out of mid-tier, whereas high-tier, it's a little less fire and forget, and or a little more fire and forget, so that's, that's something that you got to consider. Uh, so we're going to be sailing up towards the enemy. I think this Dallas was over here. Uh, this enemy is pretty broadside, so we should be able to finish him off, this New York. Really hoping so. Yeah, we're going to aim at the waterline with Sap. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that. And oh, he's going to turn and avoid. Ah, oh, man, that dispersion. That German dispersion, man. <laughs> a perfect gap just where a giant battleship can sit and take zero damage. Always love watching those shells. Because I always wonder, what were the gunners smoking? Like, why would you shoot that bad? But Monty, he's showing a broadside. Maybe we can make up for that missed opportunity to get a kill here. Definitely would love a kill. Finally, we get that kill. Um, I've done a lot of shells, SAP versus AP at this tier. You have probably many players who would argue, go AP all the time. Uh, no, go SAP all the time. I am more on the SAP side. It does give a lot of burst. It does have a long reload, unfortunately. But the Italians are really about their burst, their alpha, uh, making people feel the chunkiness. And AP is very, very easy to avoid all the damage. And I just don't like that. Um, is that to say that I would never evolve my view to say, oh, well, AP, just fire AP. Well, it's a good habit to get used to firing sap, even if it's a 50-50 shot down here. You really want to get used to firing your sap shell so that your tiers 8, 9, and 10 can succeed. Now, this is the last tier that's 320. The next tier for the Italians, the tier 7, which I unlocked, and many of you guys have as well. I'm going to get a video for that as, as soon as possible. That jumps up to 381, which is a huge gun caliber increase. And you could fire AP and overmatch a significant amount of ships, especially if you were high tier. 320? Not really. There's not really that kind of situation. So, it's kind of weird. Each time the gun caliber increases, you sort of have to consider, is this going to get me the most damage, or should I switch to the other shell? Now, we're moving up here. Uh, the speed of the Italians is fantastic, and uh, Tier 6, no exception. It's still very fast. Uh, it's great at moving around the map and really getting into a position where you can be felt. Uh, I really appreciate the speed of battleships. Obviously, you've got the American alternative battleship line. Their speed is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, someone in my stream asked me to play a Kansas in Brawl, and it went about as well as you would expect. So having the speed to maneuver really allows you to get the ship where it needs to go and get the angle that it needs to be successful. And we're just firing on this cruiser on cooldown. This is really the best shell you can fire at him. Uh, SAP is not, especially because of the damage per minute, Sap is just the shell you have to fire against DDs. Um, 
it is absolutely the better of the two between that and AP. To me, it is. Uh, it ends up doing a little bit more damage, of course. But it's not ideal. You know, it's, it's a compromise to your damage output to fire on DDs. But sometimes it's just necessary. Now, I ended up looking at, like, a really nice shot. Very nice. Um, nearly bow away. Uh, but it didn't kill him. I'm hoping a teammate will kill him. Just waiting for our cooldown to come off. Uh, but from this angle, sap is definitely the way to go. Uh, teammates are losing a little bit. And I was concerned at this point. I was like, this game is going the wrong way. Uh, now, the friendly is setting him on fire. And I do believe he's going to burn down. Uh, getting a little cheeky here. But I do think, yes. Gnevni finally finishes him off. Next up, we go out to the New Mexico. Now, funny enough, certain ships don't follow this super high armor rule. And one of those ships is the New Mexico. They put a lot of light armor on the outside. Brits as well. French as well. Uh, I'm not really sure about tier 6 French Normandy or the tier 7 Lyon. But this is an example of a ship where you can just fire sap at it and you're going to do the most damage at it. You're never going to really get to the Citadel, so that's not really a consideration. It's really, the, can I do 30% with my sap, which is pretty easy because it's not going to overpin. That's a good shot. Or hope that AP doesn't overpin. Because if it overpins, it only does 10%. Sap does 33% when it makes contact with any armor that it can pin. That's just the way it goes. Uh, so the only way that you can match it is if your AP pins and there's no other qualifying scenario there so yeah just fire sap really truly fire sap you you're not going to be doing as much damage as you would at high tier in exactly the same situation but it works really well and the further you are from the target the more likely the shell is going to dive onto the top and have more than enough penetration so Something to think about. Um, what else can I say about the Andrea Doria? Ah, uh, you know, obviously it's a tier 6 GC. It feels like a tier 6 GC. It's not as good as the, five, the tier 5 GC. Uh, I do like Sap, though, so it is valuable in that way. And, man, my team is just trying to kill themselves so quickly. The AA is surprisingly effective for self-defense. And... You know, this is an interesting thing to think about. 4.6 is the range of the AA, and that's basically the same range as the Tier 10 battleship. So you don't really lose out on, you know, effective AA range engagement. You more lose out on the damage output per second. But that's not that big of a deal. The Italians actually handle self-defense from aircraft very well. Both that and their turret traverse plus their rudder, they can absolutely be as frustrating to try and bomb as a DD or a light cruiser. And I appreciate that as someone who doesn't want to be bombed. Uh, so let's take a look at the skin. It looks pretty sweet. It's got, obviously, the Roman Empire uh, shields. Uh, God, I don't remember exactly what they're called, but you know what they are. I'm sure of it. Uh, it's got some more uh, white and red symbolism with some gold trim. Looks really nice. Doesn't look quite as nice as the tier 8, 9, and 10. But that's by design. They're trying to make sure that you guys are more interested in picking up the higher tier premium skins. Uh, because they do provide more of that passive, you know, credit income, XP, all that stuff. And that helps a lot, or cut down on the cost of running ships. Especially tier 10. Uh, so, you know, overall, I like the skin. It looks good. It reminds me of the Roman Empire. It's obviously not the ship that I want to play that is going to be the Roman Empire. I want to play Lepanto, and I want to play the, uh, was it Colombo? Uh, but we'll get to those, of course. Uh, in this game, it's all that enemy DD. Uh, it felt pretty good. I felt like I was effective, and I felt like I handled the shell the right way, given a broadside broadside battleship you know what do you choose to fire uh, other things about the ship you know it's 
It's really just a one-trick pony. It has heal. It doesn't have an aircraft. You can't do scout. You can't do fighter. Honestly, I wouldn't care about a fighter since you are Italian and your self-AA defense is really good. Outside the gun, the uh, AA gun range. Uh, but, you know, overall, Andrea Doria works really nicely. It, it flows with the other Italian battleships. Uh, is it the best ship at tier 6? Well, no. Uh, but because of the way SAP works, it doesn't really give up much when it's firing on targets above it. Because targets above it are generally all or nothing armor schemes, which SAP works very well against. So, you know, that's something to consider. That you're not going to necessarily feel like such an underpowered ship in those poor matchups. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like my video, please like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. You can subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.